guys, it's Libby, and today I'm going to talk about a thing which is, you know, pretty inconsequential in and of itself, but uh, for book lovers, it's a bit of a crusade. And that is, of course, dog-earing the pages of books. Opinions on this practice range from you are damaging a cultural artifact to, uh, to quote, a perennial favorite, Jesus Christ. Uh, books were made for man, not man for books, so do whatever you want. And I know that a lot of people don't particularly care about what other people do with their own books, but I wanted to share the way I practice the dog earring of books because I do it in a way that I think enhances my relationship with the book. So I think most people use dog earring to either mark their place um, so they don't have to use a bookmark or to uh, mark specific pages or passages that they really like or that they want to reference in a review later. I don't do either of those things. I have a healthy collection of bookmarks. These are just the ones that are not in any books right now. Thank you very much. And I've just accepted that I'm not going to reference specific lines in my reviews. So what I do instead is I, um, for books that are broken up into sections, I dog ear the first page of each section. So here's The Fair Fight by Anna Freeman, which I've taken as an example. Um, I don't do this like for individual chapters um, unless you know, it's a slightly strange form of book, like for example, The Wonder by Emma Donahue. Um, it's over 200 pages, but it only has five chapters. So any like significant chunk of the book, if it's divided up that way, I will dog ear it. So, you know, part one, dog ear, and then I flip through, go to part two, dog ear, and I leave those in permanently. And I do this in what may be perceived as a slightly strange ritualistic way. Immediately after I acquire a book, either in my car, right after I've walked out of the bookstore, or once I've opened my box from Amazon or Book Outlet, 99% of cases I am not going to start reading that book that day. But I don't just want to get a book, put it on the shelves, and then like have no interaction with it. I want to, I want to have a moment with my new book. And going through and finding the first page of every book or every part is a way to still experience the book without having to make the commitment of reading it. So I can get a bit of a taste of its structure. I find it interesting to see whether the parts are all approximately the same length, um, or frequently you'll find that they get shorter towards the end, but sometimes they get longer towards the end, which is also interesting. And if the parts have titles or dates associated with them, that can also help me sort of learn more about this book I'm about to read. Um, I have never been spoiled by a part name. Um, I think it would be possible to be spoiled by chapter titles if you were to go through and do this individually by chapter. But I think authors know that there's a decent chance that you will look at the part names before you get to that part. So they don't put spoilers there. And then I also find this helpful when I'm reading because I find if I know that I'm getting close to the end of a part, I will push through and read a little bit more so I can get to that good ending place, or occasionally cliffhanger. So I find if I'm not liking a book, it's useful to know how much more do I have to get through before I can reasonably take a break. And then when I'm like really intensely into a book, it's nice to know when I can have like a, a pause of the emotions and the resettling. And then if I decide to unhaul a book, I do the reverse of my initial ritual, which is to go through and undog ear all the pages, because I'm normally giving them to a used bookstore, um, and they probably don't want a book full of dog ears. And so that feels kind of like deconsecrating a church or something, because I'm going through either, either I was disappointed by the book and I had high hopes for it and I wish it had been better, and in that case I go through and I unfold all of the dog ears, um, in a slightly, in a, in a somewhat melancholic way. Uh, but sometimes if I sort of vehemently hated the book, I'm like, take that book. You are no longer part of my collection with the dog-eared parts. And then of course, a lot of books are not broken up into parts. I think the sorts of things that I read, um, you know, the sort of historical fiction, classics, a highly literary speculative fiction is more likely to be broken up into parts. Um, so I think my bookshelf is probably about half and half. But whenever I get one of those books, I feel like I've been cheated. I can't have my meditative page through. I just have to, I can sort of look at the cover. I'm afraid to go fiddling around inside looking at the text because I might get spoiled. So I pretty much just have to get it and put it on the shelf. And it's, it's anticlimactic for me. 
so that's how I do things. I'm super interested to know if anybody else does this because I've never heard anyone else talk about it. And I'm also interested um, if any of you guys are vehement anti-dog earers um, for people who use them in place of bookmarks. Uh, do you hate me as much as you hate those people? Or have I convinced you that maybe there is some good to the dog earring of the first page of a part? I look forward to your comments and I'll see you later.